Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. Reds fans, yes, Reds fans in Miami as they come into Marlins Park. Outside here in Miami now, it is raining very, very hard. That's why we are so fortunate to be inside and under roof here at Marlins Park in Miami as the fourth and final game of this series will unfold. Reds and the Marlins right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi and a pleasant Sunday afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Kelch along with Chris Welsh as the Reds try to win their first series since the All-Star break. And, Chris, one thing we know for sure, they've been getting exceptional pitching. Another great one last night by Homer Bailey. And you'd like to think that quality starts, ultimately quality starts, lead to wins, but that doesn't always be the case. Well, the three pitchers in this series so far against the Marlins have really set the bar of expectations very high for Mike Leake. Each and every one of them have gone out there, and they've thrown seven innings of one-run baseball. But the Reds have wasted a lot of very good starts this year. Two runs or less. Last year, the Reds played in 64 games and lost 10 of them. Well, the Reds have already lost 10 games in which they've pitched two runs or less out there out of just 44 overall. So they're on the same pace. They're going to pace, play somewhere between 60 and 65 games this year where their pitching staff gives up two runs or less. But you don't want to lose too many of those games. That is really when you waste a good start. Well, Mike Leake is on the mound this afternoon for the Reds. And speaking of a very good start, his last outing against Arizona was an exceptional one. Well, Brian Price said right after that outing that he was ultra aggressive in that outing. He went right after him. You know, the guy's very competitive. I mean, he may not have the most overpowering stuff out there. And the temptation for Mike Leake when you watch a pitch is to compare him to Johnny Cueto and Matt Latos and so on. But remember, the leak in this rotation is down around the fourth or fifth spot in the rotation. So when you get a guy that put up the kind of numbers on a season that Mike Leake does. Uh, it is very impressive. It takes a lot of headaches away from the uh, manager overall. And today he will face an uber prospect at one point, Jacob Turner, drafted by the Detroit Tigers, picked up the Annabelle Sanchez trade here in Miami. He's been somewhat of a disappointment, but he's only 23 years old. He's a hard thrower. And so far, the Marlins starters have done pretty well here against the Reds in this series. Well, he's been in the uh, rotation, out of the rotation, and back in today. Reds see Jacob Turner for the first time in a couple of years. We'll take a break. When we come back, who will get the big hit in this afternoon's game? It's Ben Ludwig. It's Ben Ludwig. It's Ben Yelich. Today, we'll see you later on.
you by your Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good, it's Skyline time. Marlins Park wrapping up a four-game set here in South Florida. I'm Jim Day on the field. If today's game is anything like the three previous, it might come down to one key hit. Let's take you back to Thursday where Ryan Ludwig, tie game in the eighth, his two RBI single provided the winning hit in what would be a 3-1 Reds victory. Following night, it was Ludwig again. It was a one-run game. Until Ryan delivers a two RBI double, blue variety. It keys a three run inning for Cincinnati. They would go on to win five to two. And then last night, the Marlins get one back. In the 10th inning, Christian Yelich with the walk off hit. So three games, three key hits. What can we expect today? Well, perhaps our Elk and Elk storylines will shed some light. At least the Reds hope so. Brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Reds have done well in four or five game series this season. In fact, they're 5-0-1. Took three out of four in Pittsburgh. Three out of four against the Brew Crew in Arizona. The same thing. Tied the Dodgers in a four game set. Swept Frisco out there in Giants land. And then the five game series. And make up of a rain out in that series the reds have won four games to one over the cubs 15 3 and 6 since 2012 and four game series can they get the series victory today we'll find out together lineups and first pitch jim kelch chris welsh are next on fox sports Ohio. Miami, we would be experiencing a rain delay at the start, but we are comfortably under roof here at Marlins Park for the finale of this four-game series of Reds and the Marlins. Let's take a look at the Reds starting lineup brought to you by Meyer. Here's how Brian Price lines them up this afternoon. Hamilton, Bruce, and Frazier at the top. Mazzarocco, Ludwig, boy, he's had a pretty good series here thus far. He's in left field batting fifth. Then Schumacher at second. Negron gets his second start of the series at third. Cozart short. Leak ninth and doing the pitching against the right-hander. On the mound for the Marlins is Jacob Turner. Now Jacob Turner, big, big right-hander, six feet five inches tall, 210 pounds, former number one draft pick by the Detroit Tigers. And he is now in the starting rotation. He pitched a little bit out of the bullpen this year, but he started the season on the disabled list when he injured his shoulder in batting practice. Made him sit out a little bit, so this is just start number 12 for Turner. 
He had made one start early in the year, then went on the DL for basically a month. Came back, was in the rotation for the Marlins. Wasn't doing a very good job, really. They put him in the uh, the bullpen, and then he made, uh, after the All-Star break, I guess, two pretty good starts. And yet he was still going to get bumped because of the uh, the addition of uh, Jared Kosar. But when Henderson Alvarez went on the DL, Turner back in the rotation. To the second baseman, that is Valdez Bean. Hamilton is thrown out, and that's how this afternoon's game gets going. Marlins defensively brought to you by your Ford dealers line up like this. Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton from left to right. That's been the same in all four games of this series. McGee, Echeverria, Valdez, Bean, and Jones third to first. That's been the same. Turner throws today to Jeff Mathis. Mathis makes his third start of this four-game series behind the plate. Get over there. Bruce tops this ball, and it's going to be handled by the pitcher, Turner. One pitch to Jay, a one unassisted put out, and there are two men gone. So here the Reds are again now with two men out, nobody on in the first inning. They have yet to have a first inning base runner in this series. Marlins decked out in their bright orange jerseys today. They get the one run win here last night two to one in ten on the base hit by Yelich driving home Mathis in the bottom of the tenth inning against Sam LeCure so the Reds lead this series two games to one that one run win last night the twenty sixth of the year for the Marlins that is the most in the major leagues. Frazier at 276, team high 20 homers, 57 runs batted in, hitless in the game last night. Flame straight up. Two balls and a strike. Last night, in terms of the National League Central, the Cardinals were a winner at home, 9 to 7. Over Milwaukee that evens that series at a game apiece. Cardinals get back within two games. Pittsburgh, they won at Arizona eight to three. Base hit by Frazier. There's your first first inning base runner of this series for the Reds. Frazier comes through with the single. Boy, the guy's full of energy all the time, isn't he? I mean, even when he has a tough night at the plate, he's smiling, he's working hard, he seems to bring energy to this ball club. And that's something that when your team doesn't swing the bats well, it almost appears like you're not trying. It seems like you're lethargic. You're really not, but it appears that way because you don't have base runners. But Frazier's a guy that will always bring that emotion. And now is Mezzarocco. Interesting number about Turner. A 350 average against him by right handed hitters. Well, he's still struggling. I mean, he's a young man that actually threw harder in high school than he is throwing here in the major leagues. Frazier steps off, and a nice turn by Turner to step off correctly and get Frazier in the rundown, and he is tagged out by Garrett Jones. That's going to go one, six, three. That's a caught stealing. That has worked for Todd earlier this year, but it doesn't work here in the first inning.
their ball club to within a game of the 500 mark. Another day goes by. They stay six games out as they won last night. Washington won as well. Here's their lineup brought to you by Meyer. Yelich, Valdespin, and Stanton. Valdespin having a good series so far. McGee, Jones, and Ozuna. Echeverria, Mathis, and Turner with Mike Leake making start number 23. Now Mike Leake on a roll after what he did last time out against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Excellent outing, but as I said in the open, the bar of expectation here for Red Star is pretty high right now. Each and every starter has gone seven innings and given up only one run so far in this series. Leak on his career is 50 wins against 38 defeats. Tonight he makes or today he makes start number 132 of his major league career. At only 26 years old. And that's important because it's interesting to note right away that Mike Leak was taken in 2009 first round by the Reds but he was taken one spot ahead of the pitcher that he's pitching against today in Jacob Turner Turner was drafted in the first round 2009 in the ninth spot of the draft leak was taken eight leak came out of Arizona State a seasoned college player and Jacob Turner came out of a high school St. Charles Missouri right outside of St. Louis and right now leak is sitting on 50 career wins and Jacob Turner is sitting on nine career wins so the Reds you know that was the same year, of course, that Steven Strasburg was the number one player taken in the draft. It was also the year that Mike Trout was taken in the 25th spot. So there's been good and bad in that draft all over the place. The league had not walked a batter in either of his last two starts at home against Arizona or at Milwaukee, but here he walks on five pitches, Christian Yelich, to get the Marlins' first inning started. That'll bring to the plate Jordani Valdespi. Reds a 500 club entering today's game. 55 up, 55 down. Still five and a half behind the first place Milwaukee club. Cardinal win last night. And the Reds lost means they are now three and a half behind the third place Cardinals. Pittsburgh gets within a game and a half of Milwaukee and one out in the loss column. Here's Valdespin at 289 with a couple of homers, six RBIs. We mentioned on Thursday that it's going to be Valdespin and Solano that will basically share the second base spot. But Valdespin, with all the Reds' right handers, has been in there in all four games in the starting spot. In the series, four hits, 11 at bats. team not big on the stolen bases they came into this series with 44 near the bottom of the league they have not stolen a base in this series thus far to the right side Schumacher will knock it down recover and get his man at first base Schumacher stays with it gets bound as being 4-3 we're out number one. It's a good lesson for young players right there when you see a guy like Skip Schumacher who never gives up you know, you bobble the ball immediately. A lot of players are looking around and they're hanging their head. But you're always taught as an infielder. In the minor leagues, I remember infield instructors right from the very first day I ever showed up, yelling at those, yelling at those infielders, saying, "Hey, if you bobble it, you get on it right away and try to make something out of nothing." And he does right there to pick up an out. Runner in scoring position now for Giancarlo Stanton. Starts the game at 293. League best 26 homers. League best 74 runs batted in. Made a bid for a home run in four consecutive games last night. He hit that ball in the first inning off the top of the wall in right field. Ended up getting a double out of it. It appeared when he hit it that he thought. The ball was going out.
guy takes a big cut. I mean, he is huge. Big guy. You stand next to him, you're thinking, you, you know, you, you, you're standing next to a linebacker from the NFL. That's a big, hearty cut right there, and that's one reason why he hits the ball more than 450 feet more often than anybody else. What did you say the other day? He has six home runs over that distance? Something like that? Where he likes it, and we showed a video yesterday of his home run balls and where those pitches were located. And he likes it middle in, you know, a little bit above the belt. A lot of times, guys, you get that pitch right there, and if you don't have a lot of something on it, they will hit it a long way. It's the best thing for Mike Leake is just to stay away from his hot zone. And there it is. Got him to chase the breaking ball. The leak gets the big hitter, Giancarlo Stanton, on strikes for the second out of the inning. Well, that breaking ball is a great pitch, but it was all set up by a fastball that came inside on Stanton the pitch before. I mean, that was one of those pitches that goes from strike to ball. Looks like it's going to be a strike. Ends up as being a ball down and almost in the dirt. I like that effect. That was a little bit different, wasn't it? Yeah. We're going to have all sorts of special effects for you today. Yeah, I heard you talking in the pregame show about the green wall, the magic green wall. Casey McGee with two out. Saw Jim Day out there doing something with the. I didn't realize that the color of that wall is very significant. Jim Day will fill us in on all of that. He is always scrounging around for interesting stories, isn't he? Jim Maybe Day. none more interesting than this. Mm -hmm. Off the shin guard, it appeared of Mesoraco. That's going to send the runner Yelich over to third. We'll get another look at that to see if he was crossed up or how that occurred because that did not look pretty. Get leather on that. Well, he was looking for that ball up and in. And I, I don't know whether they just messed up the type of pitch. It looks like that he was trying to throw a cutter up and in and ended up just throwing that ball down and away. It looked like he either hit the umpire's foot or hit off of Mesoraco's toe. That's where he wanted it. Negron throws to Frazier. They get the out at first on McGee, and that puts an end to the bottom of the first. Scoreless through one in Miami. With MLB.com's easy and free game, beat the streak. Pick players who get hits in 57 straight games, and you could become a millionaire. Play MLB.com, beat the streak today. I doubled down yesterday and beat the streak and fell victim to no hits by my guys, so I'm at zero and beat the streak hey, right now. We're tied. 
Yes, indeed. Line drive to left. Mazzarocco gets the hit. Second hit by the Reds in this game. Leadoff man is on. And so here we have uh, two right handers that have faced Turner so far. We talked about the 350 average against him by righties, and they are two for two thus far. Well, as you like to say, Jim Kelch, stats don't lie. That's right. That'll bring Ryan Ludwig to the plate. They can be manipulated. I'll let your agent do that. <laughs> There's a number we're talking about. Turner 11 starts this year only two quality starts. Those came very early. This guy's been a road warrior of sorts for the Marlins. He last started a game here at Marlins Park on the 31st of May. We're talking over two months ago. Now he has appeared here out of the bullpen. Since that last start here, but he hasn't started a game here at Marlins Park since May 31st. Two starts he's made since the break. He allowed two runs in five innings and a win at Atlanta. Last time out, one run in five and two thirds and a win at Houston. Well, they really thought when they got him in the trade with Detroit for Annabelle Sanchez. Sanchez has gone on, I think, won about 25 games, lost 18 for the Tigers since that time. They thought that they were getting a real gem in Jacob Turner, young man that at high school age was throwing 98 miles an hour for Westminster Christian Academy. That was in St. Louis. And where he pitched for uh, with a number of other sons of major leaguers. Mike Matheny sent his kid there. Todd Worrell, Andy Bennis all had their kids there that were kind of alongside Turner, but it was Turner that got all the attention. And he was drafted by the Tigers and then decided to sign three hours before the deadline in August. He was all committed to go to the University of North Carolina. He had Scott Boris representing him, and at the deadline, the Tigers ended up giving him a deal which could have potentially turned out to be worth the richest deal ever given to a, a high school pitcher in the draft of around five point five million dollars. And he excelled immediately as a prospect in the Tigers organization but has never really reached his potential here in the major leagues at least not yet still only twenty three. Ludwig batting for the Reds now. He's a subject of our IGS bringing the energy feature here this afternoon. Two of our RBIs in each of the last two games in which he has played. Thursday and Friday he had the big hits for the Reds. This time he's driven in RBIs, multi RBIs in consecutive games in almost two years. He had the big hit in the eighth inning against Brian Morris on Thursday. That was after the big controversy over that play at the plate. Then he came back on Friday and again had a big hit that came against Chris Hatcher in the sixth inning. It was not in the lineup last night, but he gets a start here this afternoon. Overall, at six home runs, 31 runs batted in. And he strikes out on a 3 2 pitch. Like he made a chase ball four right here. In fact, he certainly did. Maybe thinking it was going to be a fastball on a three-two count. Turner drops a little slider on him. One on one out now for Skip Schumacher getting the start today at second base. Started in left field last night. In fact. Skip had a couple of hits. It was the only red that had a multi hit game, a couple of singles. 237 overall with a homer. He's driven in 17. It's another one. If you look at the Reds' averages since the All Star break, most of them, unfortunately, are under 200. Hamilton 193, Bruce 100, Frazier 190, Ludwig 194, Kozar 119. Those are all numbers since the All Star break for Reds hitters. Only 
only Reds player who's really been consistent since the break. He's up over 300 is Brian Pena. Well, the one thing they can do today is not worry about their batting average, but worry about not being too aggressive when you've got a guy like Jacob Turner having a hard time pounding the strike zone. Very much unlike what happened in the last couple of nights, because the Marlins have thrown very good pitchers at the Reds the last couple of nights, but Turner may be a step down. Even on a 3 0 pitch right there, very marginal as he just nips the outside corner. This is a game, if you're the Reds, that you really want to get out there and win. You do not want to add Jacob Turner to the list of somewhat non household name pitchers that have shut you down over the last couple of weeks. There is ball four. So Schumacher draws the free pass. He joins Mesoraco on the bases. Now an opportunity to take the early advantage goes for the Reds. Now with Schumacher being very patient right there and earning a walk if I'm Chris Negron I'm looking to wheel it on the first pitch I see you're getting down bottom of the order right here the hitters aren't getting any better as they get beyond you. So even though he's only got a couple of home runs not all that much experience pretty good fastball hitter. He gets a pitch that he wants on the first pitch. You let it rip. 27 at bats for him this year, and he shoots this ball into the right field corner. Chased by Stanton on the run, and it's a fair ball. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. They're going to throw back the first. No, they look the second. Can't get a play there. That's a terrific catch in the right field corner by Jean Carlos Stanton. That looked like it was in going to be into the corner for extra bases to be sure. What a play by Stanton. I think he even surprised himself with this play. Look how far he's got to go. He's playing straight away right field and he gets this ball on the warning track near the wall. The groans got to be thinking what do you have to do to get yourself an extra base hit. I wow. mean to tell you he put that in a great spot but Stanton was able to run it down. So two out. Chance to jump in front early falls on the shoulders now of Zach Kozart. Zach hitless last night 0 for 3. 1 for 11 in this series. And he gets ahead two balls and no strikes. Well, two balls and no strikes here. Don't make the guy throw a strike and take it and get the three one. You got the pitcher in the on deck circle. You want to be able to swing that bat if you get a pitch you like. And I'm not so sure that Jacob Turner is going to be in a hurry to go right after him right here. Why would you? Right down the heart of the plate and Kozart shoots it out in the left field for a base hit. Mezzarocco will score and the Reds score first here in the second, taking a one nothing lead. Just as you say that. He threw a belt high fastball right over the middle of the plate. Meatball is where you want to translate that one because it was. It was 2 0 right down Broadway. And you can see that ball come back a little bit. Jeff Mathis, the catcher, setting up outside. But at that point, Jacob Turner's just trying to throw a strike. Mazzarocco scores the run. Kozart drives it in his 23rd. And Brian Price is out there now talking with the second base umpire Andy Fletcher about what I'm not sure. I did not see anything out there. I'm wondering if. Maybe Brian Price is talking about perhaps. A obstruction by the. By the fielder. With regard to Schumacher approaching second yeah. base. Discussion between Andy Fletcher and Brian Price comes to an end, and to be honest, neither of us up here can figure out what that may be about. But 
Brian back to the dugout. Leak first pitch swinging to Echeverria. They get the force out at second on Kozart, putting an end to the top of the second. But the Reds score first and lead 1 0 in the middle of the second. Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. Perhaps you've noticed a lot of green in this stadium, not just the grass, but you can create magic on the outfield wall where suddenly I can be at the beach. Or how about a little aerial action? Or I could go Chris Welsh and enjoy the nightlife at South Beach. Boys in the booth, top that with your little telestrator. And there it is, the magic of the green piece. And there's Jim Day with a big smile, of course. As he always is. Yeah, he's still standing out there right now. You just can't see him, right? I never realized what you know that green, the magic green wall could do, but this is a very versatile ballpark. Good to know that about Jim Day and Marlins Park. Well, as he's standing out there, we can't see him. Maybe he can inadvertently catch a fly ball that goes over the head of one of the outfielders, and since he's there, he can just handle things. Nicely done, Jim Day. Bottom of the second, one nothing Reds as Jones grounds out on the first pitch he sees to start the home second inning. Brings Marcel Ozuna to the dish. Got that digging about you and your nightlife, didn't he? <laughs> he did. Never misses an opportunity. Ozuna at 265 with 16 home runs. And the series one hit, 10 at bats. Now falls behind three and one. And ball four. Let's go down to Jim Day, who has more on what happened uh, out there at second base when Brian Price came out to talk to the umpire. Jim? Well, I got a good look at it out there from the green wall. <laughs> Skip Schumacher was on first base when Zach Gozar delivered the RBI single, and when he was rounding second base, he ran into Echeverria out there the problem is is that Schumacher stopped had he kept going to third base they would have called obstruction but since he stopped they were not calling obstruction so he ran into Echeverria that's what Brian Price was arguing the umpire countered with well he didn't keep running all right thank you Jim so yeah Chris you were uh, 
what you figured was correct. Yeah, I figured something like that, and that's it puts the runner in kind of a hairy situation right there. Because what if you continue on a third base and get thrown out, and they don't pick up that call halfway? They didn't see the collision between runner and fielder. Then you're kind of stuck. So you can see why Schumacher went back to the bag to make sure he wasn't thrown out. Especially given the fact that there were two outs. That's a very now with one on one out. Starts the game at 274 and the series two hits in 11 at bats. Get into a double play in this situation last night in the second inning. We've seen him make some sterling defensive plays out at the shortstop spot for the Marlins over the course of these last three days. Now we heard on the pregame show uh, Jeff Pecora, Brian Giesesaw talking about it. Certainly from this end of things, we want to pass along our congratulations to the Reds Live folks for winning the Emmy for Reds Live, the best regularly scheduled sports show for the fifth time in the last six years. Great job. Congratulations. That's guys. a great winning streak right there. Way to go, guys. Jim Day, of course, part of that. Pick, Brian, all the folks behind the scenes, producer Dream Weaver, and all the folks back there, congratulations on the Emmy. And they'll all be up in Cleveland to celebrate that Emmy, right? Coming up this week. My understanding, yeah. Hope they bring that Emmy with them. Totted around like the Stanley Cup. To third, Negron. Schumacher, Frazier, got it. Double nice play. Turn. Echevarria hits into his second in two days, and that puts an end to the Marlins' second inning. The Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. If you'd like more information, visit FoxSportsSupports.com. Dog Day, Bark in the Park Day here at Marlins Park. We've had a number of those at Great American Ballpark. I believe there's another one still or so scheduled, and that's what they have going on today. Bring your friend. And enjoy the game. 
This looks to be the biggest crowd of the four days. Last night, 25,000 plus looks to be bigger here today for this Sunday afternoon game as Billy Hamilton, one of my beat the streak picks for the day, leads things off. Especially if you're counting legs. Mm -hmm. Bruce next, then Frazier. Billy bounced out to the second baseman, Valdez being to get this game started. Well, he was on such a streak, a good roll before the break. You'd like to see him get back on it here, and he lines this ball in the left center. That's a hit. And my double down pick is on a good start with Billy Hamilton getting the base hit. Uh, getting Hamilton on has been so important to the Reds this year. I mean, and it, we've shown you over and over again when he gets on and scores a run, the Reds win. When he doesn't, the Reds have a difficulty putting a W on the board. Now you'll see maybe Jay Bruce getting some fastballs that he wouldn't normally expect out of Jacob Turner with Hamilton at first base. Billy's attempted one steal and been successful in this series. Of course, that was that big steal on Thursday night. That allowed him to get into scoring position along with Mazzarocco and Ludwig drove them both home to make it three to one. 24% would be Steelers thrown out by Mathis this year. Marlins pitch out. Our Reds fans have certainly been pleased with the number of steals that Billy has picked up this year. They sometimes don't see the number of caught stealings. He is actually at 16, been caught more than anybody else in the National League. His percentage this year 72%. Joe Morgan always uh, throws out the number of 80%. If you don't steal 80% of the time successfully, then that's not a good percentage. In the minor leagues the last uh, what three years 11 12 and 13 Billy stole over 300 bases and was safe 82 percent of the time he's not at that number yet this year he just creeping off first gets the big lead here's the throw it's way late and a stolen base number 43 for Billy Hamilton well that was a stolen base waiting to happen right there the more that Jacob Turner threw to first base the more Billy Hamilton realized he could get a bigger lead. So nothing Mathis can do about that and you run yourself into scoring position that's like hitting a double for Hamilton. Opportunity for Bruce with a runner in scoring position and nobody out at the minimum get him over. Jay this year 256. In terms of runners in scoring position. We've seen him hit the ball the other way hard a couple of times in the last two games since he returned from the bereavement list. I really don't want to see him hit the ball the other way. It doesn't matter how hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way this team is looking for runs right now, Bruce ought to be up there. I'm sure he is thinking about doing the basic fundamental thing in baseball, which is get that ball to the right side, get your speediest player to third base, and then have your number three hitter drive him in with maybe even nothing more than a fly ball. Well, he hits it to left on the ground, picked up by Yelich. Hamilton coming home. There's Yelich's throw, which is way offline. And it's a 2 0 Reds lead as Bruce comes through with the RBI single. His 43rd run batted in, and that's his first since the All Star break. His first in a long, long time. Well, we have seen Jay Bruce take a couple of good swings, and that is a good swing, even with a runner at second base, probably thinking, hey, I've got that big hole on the other side of the infield. I'll use that. But he had a hit and run type swing the other day where he had a ball very similar spot, staying back on the ball. Maybe that'll teach him to keep that shoulder in, and we'll see a little more of Jay Bruce the way we expect. Here between now and the end of the year. We've had Chris a couple of opportunities to see the arm of Christian Yelich in left field and uh, not as impressive as some of the others. A little odd throwing motion is all. 
Now Mike Redmond out of the dugout, the manager of the Marlins, and he will talk with Tom Woodring, the third base umpire. We wonder what this may be about. I'm not so sure that they have they appealed yet to third base whether maybe Billy Hamilton had missed the bag. I'm not sure if that's uh, I'd have to look on the list. There that hasn't, been, appeal there hasn't been a pitch yet. There wasn't a continuous appeal. This is the only thing I can think that this conversation would be about Hamilton coming around and. Maybe from the like dugout he, it appears like he missed, but it looks like the base moved when he hit the inside corner. Now according to the reviewable plays, and before you can challenge a, a touching the base ruling, you have to appeal it first. And I did not see any appeal at all. Runner going from first Bruce from the knees, the throw by Mathis is late and a stolen base by Jay. Well, a little more conventional way of stealing a base right there. Todd Frazier got picked there in the first inning by breaking a little bit too early, but the Reds have two in this inning already. And that's a great time to do it, really. I mean, right after the manager has a meeting with the umpire, the flow of the game is kind of interrupted. Before the pitcher and catcher can get back into the flow, that's when you take it to them. That's a new career high now for Bruce in terms of stolen bases. He had nine coming into this game. He had nine two years ago. For the first time in his career, he's at double figures in steals with 10. Frazier had to hit his first time, as did the man on deck, Mazzarocco. Two of them who struggled mightily in the first two games, first three games, going three for 19. Over the course of those three games, two for two so far today. Reds already have five hits. They picked up a grand total of six in ten innings yesterday, eight on Friday, and only seven in the opener on Thursday. You can throw it for a strike down there. Jammed on that one. That's a Barrio barehand pick and throw, and they've got him at first. Man, that kid can play. We have seen him make three different types of defensive plays here in this series and three superlative efforts. Here, the the very tough barehanded play. The reason this is tough because the ball is still rolling and not even an easy bounce right there on the run. Frazier hustling down the line gets thrown out by a hair on a great play by the shortstop. He made a diving play into the hole yesterday to rob a base hit from Devin Mezzarocco. That kid can pick it. 25 years old at Chavaria. Yes he has been very impressive indeed in this series. Marlins now move their infield in runner at third with one out. Mezzarocco a solid single in the left his first time trying to add to a two nothing Reds lead here in the top of inning three.
Got him on the 2 2 pitch. Took a little something off. Devin chased it. He becomes the second strikeout victim of the game for Turner. Now that sequence of pitches on Mezzarocco by Turner, very similar to the sequence of pitches that Mike Leak had against Giancarlo Stanton. Set him up with a fastball inside. Mezzarocco fouled it off, and then he sees that little breaking ball down and away, and he can't resist. Ludwig struck out his first time. Trying to get that runner home from third. Jay Bruce with two out. Hits it hard. Slicing away from Ozuna. He is not going to get it. That one's going to go to the wall. Bruce will score. There's Ludwig who's had five now. Five RBIs in this series. Makes it three nothing Reds here in the third. Well, Ludwig hit this ball hard. I mean it's a fastball that floats right back over the center of the plate. And he is all over it. Now time is called and out of the dugout comes the pitching coach of the Marlins Chuck Hernandez. He goes to the mound to talk things over with the entire infield. And while we have a moment I want to pass along our condolences to Atlanta Braves fans and the folks down there for the passing of one of their longtime voices Pete Van Weeren who passed away yesterday morning down in Atlanta. He retired after the uh, 2009 season 33 years he and uh, Skip Carey were the main voices on uh, Braves television and radio and TBS was the broadcasting great games nationwide they called him the professor he passed away at 69 years old I never met him but the people I've talked to said he's a pretty darn good guy well I can tell you he was one of the best Pete Van where it was and Terrific announcer, but just a guy that you love to see coming around to the ballpark. Always had a nice little story to tell you. Always very fair to players that he he describes. He described uh, Atlanta Braves baseball and uh, baseball world will miss him. Wild pitch sends Ludwig to third. Schumacher tries to get him home. This ball to his right, fielded by Valdespin. He'll throw on the first in time, and the inning is over. But the Reds get two. Now lead three nothing into the bottom of the third. Take a look at the rest.
threat defensively behind Mike Leak. Ludwig Hamilton, Bruce across the outfield. Negron gets a second start at third. Cozart, Schumacher, and Frazier, the rest of the infield. Leak and Mazzarocco, the battery for this afternoon's game. Bottom of the third, 3 0 Reds. Leak in search of his ninth win of the year, trying to get back to 500 overall with his record. Perfect against this Marlins club in his career. He's made two starts. He's won them both. Last year he pitched down here in a four nothing win, allowing no runs over six and two thirds. This ball in the air by Mathis in the left center field, and that's going to bounce and roll to the wall. Billy Hamilton will get it back in. Mathis has himself a leadoff double here in the third. We saw Mathis get a double to start the 10th inning last night and ultimately score the winning run in that Saturday night game and he gets the double here. Seems like we've been a couple of nights before we've seen anybody hit a ball that have gone to the wall here. We've seen some well hit balls here this afternoon. That was a breaking ball that Mathis was went right down there below the knees to get it. So now you got to figure Jacob Turner's up there to move him over. First hit of the game for the Marlins. Reds have six. Turner this year has four sacrifice bunts, and he is indeed showing bunt. Leak will field this ball and bobble. He wanted to go to third, but I'm not sure he had a play there at all. And in the course of all that, bobbled the ball. The Marlins have them at the corner with nobody out. Well, he, he thought he did, and I think he probably did. Look where he is compared to where the runner is when he fields the ball. Negron is back stepping towards the third base bag, staying home as he should right there. So if Leak is able to come up clean with that, he gets a lead runner, the catcher going in the third. And now the Marlins are threatening to come right back after giving up three runs in the last couple of innings. So they've got first and third, nobody out. Top of the order now. Christian Yelich had the game winner last night on that single into right center. Do a five pitch walk to get the Marlins first inning started. That'll be ruled as a sacrifice bunt for Turner and then an error on Mike Leak that allows the runner to reach first. Double by Mathis, sack bunt error on the advantage of Turner. First and third, nobody out. Yelich representing the tying run. He does have home run power. He has eight this year. Oh, Mike falls behind three and one. Uh, the Reds will give up a run in exchange for a ground ball double play. Leak has thrown up 13 of those. And he walks Yelich for the second time. Three walks in this game. Again, after not walking anyone in each of his last two starts. That loads the bases with nobody out. He's walked the batter in each inning here, and that's probably something that Brian Price just hates to see, especially out of a guy like Mike Leak, who's not a high strikeout pitcher. And that's where you always walk that fine line between being too aggressive and not aggressive enough with your stuff on the plate. So here is Valdez being with the bases loaded. Pretty good career average in that number with a grand slam. Mathis at third, Turner the pitcher out at second. 
Yelich over at first. Nobody out. Started to go and held up. Ball yeah, one. That was a cutter that I think Bleak wanted to get down and in so Valdespin would roll over it and get a ground ball to the right side. I mean, the most what he really wants right here is to have John Carlos Stanton come to the plate with two out. And that would mean a double play ball out of Valdespin. Down the left field line, this ball slice away and foul. A ball, a strike. Valdespin is hit into one this year. And he's a fellow that spent most of the early part of this year at the AAA level, Valdespin. Came up on the 19th of July. And now Mike Leak is a pitch away from walking in a run here in the third. Yeah, it just seems like Mike is overthrowing that breaking ball a little bit. Just trying to fly open a little bit with his shoulder, overthrowing it, staying too much on top of it. And here the age-old advice of many pitching coaches used to say, Ray Miller being the number one I ever heard, take your best pitch, take a little bit off, and throw it for a strike. And let's see what he does here. Three and two to Valdespin with the bases loaded, nobody out. To first, they'll come home, get an out, go back to first. Safe the call at first base. Three two on the force out at home plate on Mathis. Frazier may have gotten stepped on over there at first base as the runner Valdespin came charging down the line. Brian Price will come out. Let's take a look at that at bat again. Well, we'll take a look at the entire at bat first before we figure out what's going on here in our Mazda pitch by pitch. Valdestein here with the bases loaded doesn't go after the first pitch. Fouls it off to one and one. And Lee keeps going upstairs with that slider. Trying to make him chase right here. Does it now a 2-2 count. Bounces one in the dirt. Has to come in for a strike. And indeed he does come in with a low strike and gets a ground ball in our Mazda pitch by pitch. Now the interesting thing here is where is Valdestein running down the line? It looks like he steps right on top of the foot of Todd Frazier. Frazier's got his foot right in the middle of the bag. Not a good spot really for him to have his foot. But really one of the things the Reds ought to be talking about right here is where was he running down the line? Was he in the runner's lane or was he in fair territory? And if he was in fair territory in the judgment of the umpire, did he alter the throw by the catcher back to first base? And would that be the reason why he was safe at the bag? Here it appears as if the Reds are challenging the call at first base. Which was ruled safe at first by Mike Winters, the crew chief. Boy, no matter where he's umpired in this series, he's been in the middle of it all. That's an impossible angle, the one we're seeing on the big screen here now. This should give us a good look. Now it's 
hard to say where his foot was he, when it comes to that. Frazier may not have known it, but he wasn't giving Valdesme much of the bag to go for. There's no sliding lane there at first base like there is at home. So the Reds are challenging the call on the field. That was safe at first. By Jordani Valdesby. You know, it sounds kind of funny, but the safest play really for a catcher on that, if you think that that runner is running in fair territory, you throw and you hit him in the back. And that way he'll be called out at first base. But Valdesby was right on the line. I couldn't tell from that angle whether he, as he got down towards the first base bag, whether he was in fair foul territory. Now you'll go uh, a week. Sometimes two weeks without ever seeing a challenge. We've had a challenge, I think, in every game of this series. Again, the challenge is made by the Reds. The call at first, which is safe on the field. The umpires talk it over with Mike Winters, the crew chief, heading things up down there. And the home plate umpire, Mark Wagner. If it's overturned, it would be second and third with two out. If not, the bases will be loaded with one out for Giancarlo Stanton. And they say safe. So that call stands, meaning there's no clear and convincing evidence to confirm or overturn the call. That call stands at first. Bases loaded with one out. Out on Mathis in the plate. Now here's Stanton, who has one of the two grand slams hit by the Marlins this year and five grand slams in his career. Struck out his first time. You know, Lee handled him the first time by pitching him low and away. And really, if you want to just boil it down basic, you pitch to Mike Stanton very similar to how you would pitch to Todd Frazier. You try to get him to chase low and away. You show him inside to make him aware of the inside part of the plate. But if you make a mistake, look out. Did that appear to cross up Mezzarocco a little bit? It looked funny the way he received that ball. One ball, one strike. Big leader in homers and RBIs. Giancarlo Stanton. Good pitch right there. there. Really, I mean, there's no way the Stanton gets a barrel of that on the ball there and keeps it fair. But it looks so good coming in there. But Leak has got such good run on his fastball. That ball looked like it was going to be a strike, and by the time Stanton made contact, probably six inches off the plate. Bounced that thing right off his shin. Never winced. No, he did not. One and two now. Marlins got a double by Mathis, a sacrifice, bunt, and an error on Leak. Off the pitchers at bat, Turner. A walk to Yelich to load him up. Bound is being hit into the force play at the plate. Frazier to Mezzarocco. Todd playing first this afternoon. Reds challenged the call back at first base, thinking they may have gotten the double play. Safe call had been made at first. That call stands. And now Stanton for the one-two count. Got him again. Second time he has struck out. Big one there by Mike Lee. Well, you're not kidding about that. And again, setting him up for this slider away. I mean, it's one thing to throw that slider away, but you've got to make him aware a little bit of a pitch on the inner part of the plate. And he reaches, he can't get to it. And that's a great sequence of pitches under pressure there for Mike Leak. So now Leak and the Reds. If they can get Casey McGee here, get through all this unscathed in terms of the score. McGee grounded out to Negron his first time, was playing third base this afternoon. 
What you're talking about here though in Casey McGee is the National League leader in batting with runners in scoring position coming into this game at 357. Well what he is so good at is making you throw strikes. Rarely a guy that chases a pitch out of the zone just because there are runners on base. He's the kind of pitcher that, or a hitter that, as a pitcher, I can tell you, they don't, you don't want to face this kind of guy with runners on base because he works you. You don't make a marginal pitch and he chases it three inches off the plate and hits a little pop up in the infield. Looking for one spot, one pitch, one zone. Towards second base, Schumacher, Cozart, force out at second there on Valdespin. The Marlins had them loaded with nobody out, and the Reds work out of it, and they still own a 3 0 lead. It the other night. You'll want to see the video of Matt Latos trying to give a kid a baseball after he came out of Friday night's game. Also, check out the hype video for Ohio State football in anticipation of their season opener coming up in 27 days. Plus, the Timberwolves owner says there's a Kevin Love trade pending. Could it be to the Cavs? Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto. Drive safe. Spend less. Battery there, Bleak and Mezzarocco talking about that third inning. You know, that is his, that situation for a pitcher. When you've got bases loaded, nobody out, and you get out of it with no runs at all, that's the equivalent of hitting a three run home run as a pitcher. You come off the mound, you talk to your catcher, you're like, man, that was exciting. Way to go. You pump each other up. Ball three now to the leadoff man, Christopher Negron, here in the top of the fourth. Turner already over 50 pitches in this game at 53. And now a four pitch walk to the Reds' leadoff man. Means the Red have had the leadoff man on now three consecutive innings. Just a reminder as you enjoy this afternoon's game, we look forward to bringing you a Miller Time moment of the game later on, brought to you by Miller Light. Second walk given up by Turner. Goes out a base hit in the left his first time in a run batted in. There 
there goes the runner. The throw is high and late and a stolen base for Christopher Negron will be his first in the big league. Well, you know, Jeff Mathis is thinking there's nothing I can do back there because Jacob Turner simply does not have a quick move to the plate, nor does he have a very good move to first base. And no matter what Mathis does, really not going to make much of a difference. Christopher Negron gets the first bag of his career. Left center field off the bat here of Kozark going to be handled out there by Ozuna and the grown tags and then stops heads back to second. The grown was a stolen base guy in the minor leagues he had. 30 on three different occasions his career high in 2010 playing between double A AA and triple A in the red system he had 35. That is number one, the big league level for him. Congratulations. Here's Leak with one out. Popped up. Mathis away with a mask. Two out. So it brings Billy Hamilton up there for the third time. Billy at base in the left center his first time, and pardon me, his last time. Added to that with a steal and then scored. On the base hit by Bruce. RBI chance for Billy right here. Hamilton came up there in an interesting situation last night in the 10th inning with a game tied at one. A one out triple recall by Heisey off the bench. Hamilton was up there and he struck out. Brian Price was asked after the game about how much thought he gave to the squeeze by Billy. Up the middle for Hamilton. That's another hit and a run batted in. Here comes DeGrone racing home and it is four nothing Reds as Hamilton comes up with his 42nd RBI. Brian's response when he was asked about the squeeze was basically what we just saw there. He said he's been one of our top hitters with runners in scoring position this year. And I didn't really want to take the bat out of his hands. Well, he picks up a base hit right there, and that's another run scored with two outs. And boy, that is oftentimes the difference between putting a win on the board or not, is how you hit and when you get them. And Billy Hamilton back to get a couple of knocks on base for the second time in a row now. Well, this is clearly what the Reds have been missing from this team the ability to score multiple innings in a game. They scored one in the second, two in the third, one more so far here in the fourth inning. They've already collected seven hits. They have not had a double digit hit game since the All Star break. This is game number 16 since the break. Maybe today they'll get that number. Well, I stand corrected on that. They did have 11 hits in the 5 4 game on Wednesday, thanks to the home run ball and the single in the ninth inning against the Diamondbacks. So they've had one. Now in the bullpen, Sam Dyson. We've not seen him yet in this series. But two pretty good starts since the All Star break for Jacob Turner. Not happening here today. Really had a great lead, could have stolen the base. Doesn't go, and it's 
Strike one out of Bruce. I'm not even so sure that a pitch out is should thwart Billy Hamilton from trying to a stolen base right here. Rather than give Jay Bruce another pitch, you know, Billy ought to head on down there. The worst thing that can happen is that, you know, Jay Bruce leads off the next inning. Gets another hit. This one solidly into center field. Hamilton will easily go to third. Yeah, had he stolen that second base earlier, he'd have now been into the dugout having scored another run. Well, that's twice now we've seen Bruce make solid contact in this game. How ah, good to see because sure Jay is. Bruce has got a lot of thumping to do to get back to his normal numbers, and we've seen him before carry a ball club. For a period of time and hopefully he's getting into one of those modes right now where he's seeing the ball his body slowing down his hands stay quick. And that will mean good news for Reds offense. Bruce had had only two hits in his last 23 at bats coming into this game and here he is two for three today. Frazier gets the opportunity with runners at the corners two out already a run in. Multi hit game for Bruce since the 12th of July when he went two for five against the Pirates right before the All Star break. But other than the first inning, the Reds have had the pressure on Turner in every frame, second, third, again here in the fourth. Solidly hit in the center by Todd Frazier. His second hit of the game. Hamilton will score. Bruce headed to third. The throw. And they've got him at third base. Throw coming from Ozuna to the third baseman McGee. They put the tag on the sliding Bruce. The run does score. Reds get two in the inning and now lead five to nothing.
During Hall of Fame induction weekend, after the game, stick around for a special on-field ceremony honoring more than 20 Reds legends and a post-game fireworks show presented by Cooper Tires. For tickets to this exciting weekend at Great American Ballpark, call 513-381-RED. You can go to select Kroger locations or go to reds.com slash tickets. Big, big weekend indeed when the Reds get home. These Marlins will be in town every other year. The Reds Hall of Fame induction weekend, and that's what's coming up in Cincinnati and at Great American Ballpark with the big gala, the induction ceremony on Sunday night. Garrett Jones bats first against Mike Leake here in the bottom of the fourth. Mike working now with a 5 nothing lead. in the center but that's a big cavernous area out there and Hamilton makes the catch for the out. I'm now you to tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo for a chance to have your photo shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Let's see those photos. Hashtag Ohio fan photo for a fan photo of the game. One out for Ozuna. Leak has walked three, he struck out two. There's Echeverria waiting on deck. And he gets the strikeout here of Ozuna for out number two. Well, that was a cut fastball that we talked about, the oh, very open today, and showed Mike Leak. And when he is at his best, he's got that pitch to complement the other stuff. That goes along with that curveball slider cutter right there. And that cutter was right at 90 miles an hour. Our flamethrower brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. I put a little Cholula on the grits today for breakfast. It's funny that you said that. I was just thinking about that, that I saw you shaking that Cholula yeah. onto the grits. It's a good step, man. Of course, we're way down the south although some people say that in Florida the farther south you go the more north you really are but they serve the grits why not I clear up the head that Cholula hot sauce didn't work for me <laughs> well you nightclubbers you had those <laughs> issues you know Jim Day recognized your nightclub activity on this trip uh, on his infamous green wall piece earlier no doubt you uh, went out and hit the night scene again last night I'll despite the what, fact there was a day game he, today. He, it's hard to resist down here. It's a good thing that we were be bopping around all over the place. Good down thing there we're only down here Beach. for a few days a year. Mm -hmm. Cleveland just won't be the same will it. Well you know they have the Clevelander here as a nightclub right. But that about is as far away from Cleveland. As you can possibly get. In fact, you may want to call these two towns, uh, you know, say South Beach and Cleveland and Ohio, maybe polar opposites. It's hard to believe they're even in the same country. The most polar opposite of all. You don't think you'll find the kind of nightlife and uh, clubbing scene in Cleveland that you will down here? See, I, I wouldn't. 
we even look. And I'm not really a clubber, okay? You're not? No. I just, we did, I did this and took my wife Beth out to uh, the club uh, the other night just because it was the number two ranked club in the country or in the world. And couldn't come here without take, checking it out. Left center field. That's going to split the Reds outfielders and head toward the wall. Billy Hamilton will play it. He'll get it back in, holding Echeverria to a double. Leak was able to get Echeverria. Bounce into a 5 4 3 double play as last time. This time he gets the better of the Reds pitcher with a two base hit is 16. And now for your Mike Leak, you've got. You know, you've got a nice five nothing lead, but you don't want to start let them nibble away at your lead. And you've got the number eight hitter here with a base open and the pitcher in the on deck circle. Now that may not even be the pitcher anymore. They looks like they've got maybe a, a pinch hitter coming up there, which would may dictate how differently you would pitch against the number eight hitter Mathis as opposed to if you did have the pitcher on deck. Well, they had the action in the bullpen. From right hander Sam Dyson, and that is, in fact, one of the players that they recently acquired from Houston, Kike Hernandez. On deck to bat for Jacob Turner, should Mathis keep this inning going. There's Dyson, apparently ready to come into the game. Turner threw 65 pitches through the first four innings of this one. He may have thrown his last. Shot in the left field by Mathis. That's his second consecutive hit. Runner coming to the plate. Throw cut off. Five to one. RBI single for Mathis is ninth. Run batted in. Well, Brett Butler, the third base coach, threw up the stop sign on Echeverria as he came around third base, but I think he put the stop sign up too late. Echeverria never even thought about slowing down right here, even though that ball was very solidly struck. Really not much of a stop sign there. That was more of a blinking yellow light. Uh, the Marlins put one on the board here with back-to-back -back hits at the bottom of the lineup. Here Pico out to the mound to talk things over with Mike Leake and Devin Mezzarocco. Well, Mathis now has hit the ball hard twice. He's batting the number eight spot, but he struck the ball some more solidly really than anybody else in this Marlins lineup. Now the pinch hitter Kike Hernandez comes off the bench to bat here for the pitcher Turner. Marlins will employ a new man on the mound come the top of the fifth inning. Came over in that six player deal on Thursday from the Astros along with the starter from two nights ago Jared Cosart. Actually made his big league debut earlier this season for the Astros. Early days of July. He pinched in the seventh inning on Friday and grounded out, so he is 0 for 1 as a member of the Marlins. Late there, and he's at 1 and 2. Start of the year at Double A Corpus Christi. He's hitting over 300 there. Went up late in the month of April to Oklahoma City. Their Triple A club hit over 300 there. Only 22 years old.
right side. Fielded by Schumacher. He will throw Hernandez out. And the Marlins settle for one. They get on the board here in the bottom of the fourth. Reds up 5-1 after four. Ohio is brought to you by the JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together by Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And go for the save on Wing Tuesdays at B-Dubs with specially priced wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. The pitcher on for the Marlins. We take a good look. Look at that shot of downtown Miami. New pitcher on is Sam Dyson. Now we saw Sam the other night. Dyson came into a ball game. I think it was the game in which Tom Kohler started. Johnny Cueto had it. That was on the first night of this four game series on Thursday. Dyson pitched the ninth inning and gave up one hit, a couple of ground balls, and a pop up. Got a good arm. I mean, we, we have mentioned this before in this series, and we've seen good arms out of their starting rotation, including yesterday's starter, Nathan Evaldi, who was dialing it up to 100 miles an hour in the first inning. Dyson's a high 90s pitcher. He came up from their AAA club at New Orleans on the 28th of June. One and one down there with a 2.66 ERA. As a Rocco today, one for two. He had a base hit back in the second. Sam Dyson, a native of Florida, born in Tampa, went to Jesuit High School in Tampa, then left and went to the University of South Carolina. Chris, you had a little bit of a reunion of sorts here last night with some of your old college baseball buddies from the University of South Florida. Well, I went to South Florida back in the days when they were known not as the Bulls, but as the Brahmins. Oh, really? I didn't know and that. And a couple of my teammates, Mark Baum and Mark Miggins, both live in the Miami area and come by every time the Reds come to town. When did they change the name? When they finally figured out that nobody outside the area of Tampa knew what a Brahmin was. And what is a Brahmin? A Brahmin is one of those big bulls that you see in a in a pasture here in Florida with the big long, almost the longhorn horns and the big hump in their back. Everything golden, about them is big, huh? The Golden Brahmins. So that's what it was when you went down there, the Golden Brahmins. More easily recognizable as the Bulls. Yeah. 
Echevarria gobbles this ball up and throws Mesoraco out at first. Catch Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of the Reds during the 2014 season with MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service. Celebrating 12 years. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Reds.com for all the details. And we'd like to send out a big birthday wish today to a couple of Reds fans living right smack dab in the middle of Cardinal Country. In Springfield, Missouri, John and Becky, uh, John and Betty Nickel, married, both turned 82 years old today. Watching the Reds game in Springfield, Missouri. Happy birthday, John and Betty Nickel. You keep rooting for those Reds despite the hard time you take from those Cardinal fans. Born on the same day, John and Betty Nickel, 82, reminds us of the Brennemans who were born on the same day. Indeed. Well, congratulations and happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Now, Springfield isn't Springfield or was Springfield. I know it was a minor league affiliate for the Cardinals for a long, long time. I don't know if they're still playing minor league baseball there or not. They got their double A team there. Built a beautiful ballpark a number of years ago. They own that team, do the Cardinals. Slapped by the diving McGee over at third base. And Schumacher, who had a pair of hits last night, gets one here. And now the Reds have in this game 10 base hits. So yeah, you were talking before time. early in the ball game, Jim, about how so many of the Reds have struggled offensively with the few number of hits since the All-Star break. And you get a breakout game like this where you get 10 hits. It means everybody's kind of sharing in it a little bit. Schumacher gets his first. He's been on base twice now. Nice to see, that's for sure. Hamilton with a multi hit game. Bruce with a multi hit game. Frazier, the top of the order, has six total hits in this one. After going one for 13 last night. One for ten on Thursday night. The drone trying to get it on it. He walked, stole his first big league base, scored back in the fourth. Robbed of an extra base hit and maybe a couple of RBIs in that sensational catch running toward the wall in right field back in the second inning by Giancarlo Stanton. Christopher Negron here, Chris, is getting a little bit of what you might call regular playing time now. Well, this is what everybody hopes for. If you're Chris Negron, you you've kind of been, you know, pigeonholed as one of those players that is caught in limbo between AAA and and the major leagues, and only playing time can determine whether you can break out of that mold and become a major leaguer. Hits it to the force play here. We we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Reds by four.
time is back. Back this Friday at the Holy Grail at the Banks. It's your chance to answer Reds trivia, win great prizes, and maybe, maybe be part of the Reds live postgame show. Join us this Friday at 6. Be part of the fun at the Holy Grail at the Banks. 5-1 Reds in the bottom of the fifth inning. Mike Leak back to work. He gets the top of the order. Christian Yelich leads it off. He has twice reached via the free pass. So he's walked four times now in this series. Valdez being on deck, then Stanton. Marlins threatened the third. They had him loaded with nobody out but failed to score. Produced their first run of the game last inning after the first two had been retired. That giveaway from the other night, uh, Mr. Redlegs hat giveaway. That face looks familiar. That is, of course, the organist at Great American Ballpark, John Shooty, down here in Miami enjoying Reds baseball. Love the organ music at the ballpark. It kind of takes you back to the olden days of the game. Getting away from it. A lot of places. I'm glad to see that the, uh, the Reds at GABP still entertain the folks with the Lorgan music. I like that tradition. Mm -hmm. He does a great too, job too. John does. Breaks into some of those vintage rock and roll songs on the organ. Gives them a little bit of a different sound, doesn't it? Glad to have you down here, John. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. Valdez Bean, 0 for 2 in this game, 4 for 13 in the series. Marlins, they'll enjoy the day off tomorrow. Then they head out on the road for a six game road trip that'll take them ultimately to Cincinnati. Playable on this ball is Negron on the warning track area. He handles that one off the bat of Valdez Bean. Wow. Really it kind of interesting how the schedule works out but for the Reds and the Marlins it's, it seems like feast or famine. If you haven't seen the Marlins before this series since last May so more than a year has gone by and then you play the Marlins seven times in the course of about ten days. Yeah and that's something. So you're going to see in effect the same team on both sides. There are many teams that you play in April and you don't play them again until August though the team could have a totally different build to it by then yeah, think the about playing for whatever. instance the Oakland A's in April and now go back and look at them now in August they just didn't reload during the all star you know the trading deadline they actually reconfigured their almost their entire team Stanton bats with the base is empty this is exactly the way you like it and now he's down a ball and two strikes. He's fanned twice in this game. Uh, he keeps hacking and Leak keeps dialing up that little slider. Stanton hoping to run into a hanger. He gets him on a breaking ball. It's been a three strikeout game for Giancarlo Stanton. And for the first time in this one, Marlins go in order.
summary, the Reds have produced five runs on ten hits already. This one here by Cozart in the second made it one to nothing. Jay Bruce had a base hit in the third that played at Hamilton to make it two to nothing. Ludwig with his fifth RBI of the series played at Bruce to make it three nothing. That was in the third. Billy Hamilton, he'd scored one. Now he drives one home on this RBI single in the fourth. Two batters later, Frazier to center field. Hamilton comes around to score for the second time. And it was 5 nothing Reds at the time. Marlins get a run in the bottom of the fourth. We play into the sixth now. 5-1 Reds. That's our Honda game summary. Sam Dyson re- retired the Reds without a longer run in the fifth. It gets goes out to start things off here in inning number six. Back today, one for two. In the series, two out of 13. So the Marlins will be coming into town after the Indians at Great American Ballpark. They'll be in town next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They go to Pittsburgh first. And again, they'll enjoy the off day tomorrow. We were talking about teams that could look totally different when you see them a second time through. The Mets are a good example of that. The Reds played the Mets in New York 4th, 5th, and 6th of April. And don't see them again until the 5th, 6th, 7th of September. That could be a totally different looking Mets team with a different rotation, different bullpen, and you see them some six months later. Cozart strikes out. Out number one. Well, you can always have the latest information on the Reds right at your finger, uh, fingertips. How? Follow Reds reporter Kevin Goheen from FoxSportsOhio.com on Twitter. Do that at FSOhio underscore K Goheen for the latest news and stories on your Cincinnati Red Legs. Leak over two in this game. Left side, McGee going to cut it off. He does. Off balance throw, but not in time. Leak, who can run pretty well, legs it out. He gets his seventh hit of the year. Well, he does run well. In fact, the Reds have used him as a pinch runner many, many times. But here the problem with that is, is that the angle that Casey McGee is going on when he finally fields that baseball, he goes so far over towards shortstop that. You know the rule of thumb is the third baseman wants to catch everything he can get to. But at some point your angle is taking you away from first base and he just couldn't get his body turned in the right direction that combined with leak speed. And the Reds have a man on for Billy Hamilton. Well, you'd like to think that Billy. Some of these other Reds coming out of it today offensively. Capper to the mod is going to be bobbled by Dyson. And you're not going to get many guys when you bobble that ball like that, but certainly not Billy Hamilton, who reaches for the third consecutive time. Yeah, I really can't say that this is a forced error, but you know, in the back of your mind, Sam Dyson realizes that is Billy Hamilton. These are the kind of innings, though, when you are given some extra outs, and in this inning, even though Leaks won as a base hit. You know they've barely hit the ball 90 feet in two particular in two back to back at bats and now you've got the middle of the lineup coming up. You can play a little add on here have some offensive fun. I would guess this at bat by Jay Bruce after back to back solid base hits maybe the. He may have more confidence going into this at bat than he's had in a month. May have figured that he. 
Maybe thinking that he's kind of figured something out. Tell you one thing uh, technically that I see with Jay Bruce. I don't see him closing off his front hip quite as much. And I know it's something he's been working on. It's something you get into a habit of. Is what I mean is when he takes his front side and he turns it towards the third base bag. You start doing that too much. It's very tough to get back to neutral. And he's not doing it much at all anymore. There was a time when he was really like curling his whole body, almost like a Johnny Cueto pitching delivery, if, if that's the way you, you can envision it. But once you cur curl your body like that, you really you're going to work around all the all the balls. You're just going to kind of fly your front side open when you do come around. He's a little quieter now. Well, he's clearly had the best swings we've seen in a while in this series. A couple of balls he's hit the other way. In fact, the one he hit in the third inning was on the ground against the shift and into left. Hammered the ball he hit in the fourth into center. Well, he can get his bat going. What a boost it could be to this team. He wrapped up. We don't know all the numbers certainly off the top of our head but he wrapped up one of the worst months certainly of his career this July when he hit only 139. Hey, the other thing that tells me that he's seen the ball better and feels better at the plate is he's not swinging at everything when you're in the depths of a slump. You know the only way you get out of a slump is to hit your way out but you start chasing pitches that are not good pitches and that just makes the slump worse. Popped him up. McGee backpedaling. Infield fly rule called. Bruce is out number two. That brings up Frazier. Not in this game, a single in the first. RBI single in the fourth, two out of three. Well, he's already surpassed his home run total. In terms of career high, back to back 19 home run years, 20 this year. RBI today gives him 58, his career best last year at 73. The difference is going to be he went from 273 his rookie year in 2012 to 234 last year. Back up into the 270s now, he's been close to 300 on occasion earlier this year. He hits between 270 and 280. People will be very happy. Into the hole. Echeverria. Long throw. Frazier beats it out. That's going to be an infield single for Todd. His third hit of the game. Echeverria appeared to have a momentary bobble, but even had he come up cleanly, I'm not sure he's going to get Frazier at first. Very difficult, no doubt about it. You know, normally your best chance on a play like this is the guy at second base, but unfortunately for the Marlins, the guy running between first and second is Billy Hamilton. He's standing on the bag by the time Echeverria fields the ball. Well, the Reds in this inning have had an, an error on the pitcher, a little bounce back to him, and two infield hits. Uh, 
Now Mezzarocco has a chance. With the bases loaded and two out. He's already had two grand slams this year. One against the Diamondbacks, one against the Cubs. Both of those have been on the road, and here he is on the road now with the bases loaded. Three in his career. Trying to really put some distance between themselves and the Marlins. Shot into center field. That's a base hit. Leak scores. Hamilton easily across the plate. Two run sixth inning for the Reds. Seven to one Cincinnati. And give Mazzarocco a multi hit game. And now he's at 54 runs batted in. Yeah, this, isn't this what you're supposed to do when a team gives you extra outs? And the Reds take advantage of it right here. That and the fact that they've hit into very fortuitous luck. In this inning with a couple of infield hits, but there's a shot by Mezzarocco and the hits keep coming along. They've got 13 of them now. They've scored seven runs and it's been a long time since Brian Price has been able to kind of sit back in the dugout, let the game play its way out. He was talking earlier today about getting Para into the game last night and he said, hey, you know, I was looking for a situation where I could kind of bring him in in a non pressure situation but he said we just don't play those kind of games most of the time where we are up for or down for and it turned out Manny did a very good job last night in the air right field off the bat of Ludwig which Stanton's going to get there he makes the catch to retire the side and the inning is over. This is the most Reds uh, run since the 7th of July. They lead today now 7 to 1. Of the game brought to you by Miller Light. It occurred in the bottom of the third. The Reds led three to nothing, but the Marlins loaded them up with nobody out. This is the force play at the plate. The return. The Reds challenges, thinking they may have turned the double play. Frazier got his foot stepped on, didn't get the out. Big strikeout there of John Carlos Stanton. And then McGee grounded out to end the inning. Leak worked around that. Our Miller time moment of the game. Here on this Sunday afternoon, August the 3rd. And the bats have come alive. I mentioned July the 7th. This is the most Reds runs since they scored nine on July the 7th and a 9 3 win over the Cubs. 13 hits in this game as well. Mike Leak pitching now with a comfortable lead out there, trying to even his record 
at nine and nine. And he walks the leadoff man here, Casey McGee. Hits the Reds have had in a game since they picked up 14 hits on June the 18th. We're talking about six weeks ago. They have 13 here this afternoon. The only piece of concern really in this game for the Red starter leak is the fact that he's walked four. Out, fly out. He's 0 for 2 in this game and 2 for 13 in the series. You mentioned on Thursday night, the Reds had swept the three game get together between these two teams down here last year. Won the first two of this series, had their seven game winning streak against the Marlins snap last night. But on a comfortable lead here today, Bruce came charging in there to make the play on that ball. Got to be there when the Reds take on the Cleveland Indians when Wednesday and Thursday of this week at Great American Ballpark Wednesday the first 25,000 fans receive a J. Bruce bobblehead presented by the Ohio Lottery. If you'd like tickets or look into it. You can call 513-381-RED. You can visit select Kroger locations or you can go to Reds.com slash tickets. The Indians coming to town just the start of a nice homestand for the Reds. Three different teams. Two teams from the American League. The Indians come in Wednesday and Thursday, the 6th and 7th. These Miami Marlins will be in town the 8th, 9th, and 10th. Of course, that's Reds Hall of Fame induction weekend with the big gala on Sunday night, the 10th. Off day on Monday, the 11th. And then the Red Sox. Don't the Reds owe them from that visit out to Boston? Back in May, when the Red Sox won those two games, the Red Sox will be in town the 12th and the 13th of August for a night game and a day game. So a nice seven game homestand over the course of eight days begins on Wednesday. League approaching 100 in terms of pitches. You know, he hasn't been at his sharpest today, but one pitch that he has had consistently working for him against his right handers is has slider down. He gives you a little bit lower arm angle. That spot every time has worked just about to perfection. He's got Giancarlo Stanton three times, all of them on the slider. And he gets Ozuna for back to back strikeouts with him. Got him in the fourth and now got him here in the sixth. Now with two out, he has Echeverria up there, bounced into a double play, and then doubled. He scored the only Marlins run of this game. 7-1 Reds, bottom of the sixth. Now over 100 at 101 pitches. Schumacher on the first to retire Echeverria and end the bottom of the sixth inning.
back to the Bobblehead Museum here at Marlins Park. Constantly vibrating, so the constantly bobbling in there. Ken Griffey Jr. represented a signed bobblehead. Junior, a week away from going into the Reds Hall of Fame, and I got to tell you guys, this thing really has an effect on you. Back to you. Where does this guy come <laughs> up with this stuff? I huh? love it. It's unbelievable. First the green, the magic green wall, then the bobbleheads. He just walks around, explores these ballparks, and finds some of the most unique things to talk about. You know, we need to get him one of those portable green magic walls where he can take his act on the road and never miss a beat. I don't know that he misses a beat now, does he? No, but just we're just trying to, to enhance the gym day experience. That magic green wall could do a lot of things for him, that's for sure. Sam Dyson, his third inning of work, allowed a couple of unearned runs, and a seven batter sixth inning to the Reds. Schumacher leading things off here in the seventh. JJ Hoover now up and throwing in the Reds bullpen. Leak is due a fourth in this inning. Just over 100 in terms of his pitch number. Sharply to Echeverria. And the Reds leadoff man here in the seventh is retired. Just looking ahead, the Reds will travel after this game to Cleveland, take on the Indians in the interleague series. It's a split four gamer. You see a lot of those in the minor leagues. You don't see many in the big leagues, but it's four straight days against the Indians. First two at Cleveland, next two at Grand American Ballpark. Tomorrow night, Alfredo Simon, who went into the All Star break with 12 wins, still looking for number 13, will go against maybe the best the Indians have to offer, Corey Kluber at 11 and 6 with a 2 6 1. ERA coming off back to back nine inning outings. 705 game time tomorrow night with Reds live live from Progressive Field coming your way at 630 here on Fox Sports Ohio. Same thing on Tuesday night 630 Reds live 705 first pitch Johnny Cueto against Josh Tomlin. I have to be trying to go in there and do something that they haven't done in a couple of years. They've lost nine straight games in Cleveland. Well, really, the Reds. I mean, I know that every one is a, every one of these is a major league team, and on any given night they can beat you. But if you look at the schedule, just based on the teams that are upcoming. You play four in a row with the Indians, two there in Cleveland, two back at home, and then you host the same Marlins team for three. And then they bring a Boston Red Sox team in here that is completely depleted because they've traded away so much of their starting rotation. I think four of the five that they started with are now gone. And then you go to Colorado and play four games. So those are all teams that I'm sure that, you know, maybe not all the players look at it like that. But I think the management does, and certainly the, the field manager thinks of these matchups in the next couple of weeks are very favorable to the Reds, and this is their opportunity to take advantage of them and work their way right back into the towards the top of the division. Yeah, you talk about a team that will look different from when they saw them in May, that Red Sox team that's coming in. They have pretty much decided we are not going to get back into things. They have 49 and 61 in terms of a record. 12 and a half games out. They've lost eight of their last 10. Things have not gone well for them a year after they won the World Series. They decided to start to try to reconfigure that club at the break. And right after the break, which is what they did with some big trades. John Lackey gone. John Lester gone. Lackey making his Cardinal debut today. That'll be interesting because that uh, Red Sox team is going to St. Louis. And so Lackey, as a Cardinal, 
could have the opportunity to pitch against his old team some 10 days or so after he was traded. For a team that he beat in game six to win the World Series last that, year. That make, does make it interesting. Donald Lutz is on deck. If Gozart keeps it alive, the bat for Lee. You know, after the Reds finish in Colorado, they play three in St. Louis, and then they host the Atlanta Braves for four. Have the Cubs in for three, and then they go to three against Pittsburgh Pirates and three against the Baltimore Orioles. So it toughens up considerably after they get out to Denver. Funny how you look at things because coming into this series. The Reds and the Marlins had the exact same records of 53 and 54. Marlins fans were all jazzed up thinking their club had won what six in a row or six of seven and nine of 11, thinking that they had gotten themselves right back into the wild card race, maybe even the NL East race, and were very excited about their team. Reds fans were down because their club had not done anything since the All Star break. If the Reds have to hang on here, we'll take three or four from this club. Maybe give themselves a little bit of a spark going into the series of Cleveland. Ohio fan photo, but let's take a look at today's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Eric, nice picture there at ERCBS. Thank you, Eric. John for a hot dog play of the game. How about little Mike Leak today? Mike has done a good job. Six innings, four walks, but five strikeouts. He has left the game. He was able to get some help defensively. His big inning was the third. Bases loaded with nobody out. Gets the force out of the plate. Gets the strikeout. Gets the ground ball out. Then basically cruises to the last two. A one, two, three, fifth. A four batter sixth. Mike out of the game now in line for his ninth win of the year. His 51st in his career as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, just think about what Mike Leak has done today on top of what the other starters in this four game series have done. Every one of the red starters had only given up one run in their entire outing. Now, the first three guys went seven innings. Leak has gone six here today. Uh, he's reached that 100 pitch count. They're going to give J.J. Hoover a little bit of work in. But with a very comfortable 7 1 lead, this is perfect time for Hoover to. Continue what he began to get back into doing, which is throwing more fastballs and curveballs, not using too much in the way of a slider. And 
become a little bit more of a big time contributor in tighter ball games. But the pitching that the Reds continue to run out there on a starting basis is you can't get any better. Last nine games, you add them up all together. I mean, this starting rotation in the last nine games, more innings than any other starting rotation in the National League, a better earned run average, and a four and two record, which is also the best in the National League. So if the Red starters aren't getting wins, well, neither are other starters around the league. So you can see why Brian Price goes into any series there is, whether it's a two game series or a four game series, Homer on the road, and you run one of those guys out there, you've got a pretty good chance to put a W on the board. Well, Hoover takes over for Leak. It's Mike does get the quality start his 13th of the year that gives the Reds now 72 quality starts this year second only to Atlanta's 77 in the National League pretty impressive. Ramon Santiago has taken over at third base for the Reds. line on league one run three hits in six innings four walks five strikeouts a wild pitch 102 pitches gunning for his ninth win his second in a row it took him four tries to get number 50 he wins number 51 on his first try if the Reds can hang on here and they lead seven to one in the bottom of the seventh Mathis up now pitch hitter on deck Donovan Solano. The Marlins will employ a new pitcher. Dan Jennings, a lefty, is throwing in their bullpen come the eighth inning. Strike out of the catcher Mathis is the way the home seventh gets going. Now it'll be Donovan Solano. Solano pinch it in the eighth inning last night struck out. That's the only time we have seen him in this series. Comes into the game hitting 259 with a homer and 12 runs batted in. He plays against left handers. Valdespin who's been at second base in all four games of this series plays against the right handers. Valdespin only has four at bats against lefties. Only Reds lefty, of course, other than the closer, is Manny Parra. No starter. Hit hard to right. Bruce retreats and Jay reaches up and makes the catch. So two out. Stay with us after the game. Fox Sports Ohio will break it down, bring you the first interviews and comments from manager Brian Price. It's Reds Live Post Game, brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. 
Jim Day if the Reds hang on I'll have a guest out on the field Jeff Pecora Brian Giesenslaw break it down from the studio. Chris will have his final thoughts on the magic green wall before we leave Miami. Indeed, the largest crowd at Marlins Park of this four game series 26,700. 26,700 plus 575 dogs. Dog day in the park. Cut off, headed up the middle by Cozart and his throw to first in time. Yelich is 0 for 2 with a couple of walks and a 1, 2, 3, 7. J.J. Hoover. Special fireworks show on Friday night on August the 8th to kick off Hall of Fame induction weekend. See more than 20 Reds legends take the field for an historic postgame ceremony, including Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, Eric Davis, Chris Sabo, members of the 2014 induction class, and much, much more. Plus, enjoy a spectacular fireworks show after the game. For tickets, 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or go to Reds.com slash tickets. We can't tell you enough how great it's going to be next weekend. Reds induction ceremony for the Hall of Fame. With the local products going in, Ken Griffey Jr., Ron Oster, Dave Parker. The late Jake Beckley. That'll be a good weekend at the ballpark. These Marlins will be there. New pitcher on, meanwhile, Dan Jennings. Saw him on Friday night. He threw an inning. A lot of run. Third pitcher of the day for the Marlins. Ramon Santiago, who came on to play third base in part of the double switch, batting out of the nine spot, leads things off. Ramon is 11 for 26, batting right handed this year. That's 423 average. First couple months of the season, 
You didn't know this guy was on the team. He rarely got to play, but when his opportunity came up, he has certainly made the most of it. One of the nicest young men you'll ever meet, too. Mm -hmm. Very outgoing, always smiling, working hard. Kind of biding his time until he got a chance to play a little bit. Well, you get your front line stars injured, you know, you're going to get your chances. If you're a backup infielder like Santiago, he's played all around the infield. Of course, they brought up Negron. He's had a chance to play. Schumacher, who was originally an outfielder, converted to a second baseman by the Cardinals, has had a fair amount of time at second. You know, speaking of the guys that went into the, or going into the Reds Hall of Fame, all the, the local products, Mark Rosier Griffey had a chance to sit down with Tony Perez. Over the weekend we did a tech talk and also asked him a couple of memories of each of those guys because he was their teammate with Dave Parker and with Ron Oster. Back in the mid 80s and of course he remembers. Ken Griffey Jr. as a little kid running around the clubhouse. Yeah, his dad was a big teammate. And he had a uh, he had one great story that he told about Jr. When Ken Griffey Sr. he was the hitting coach at the time and I think that he brought. Uh, or he was helping out anyway, and he and Ken Griffey Sr. brought Junior around to take some batting practice. And Tony threw him a few pitches and said, Hey, don't let anybody touch this kid. You just let him swing the way he is. And uh -huh. That was when he was about 14 years old. Wasn't long after that he was in the pros. Uh, you're right. Be good to get everybody together. The rest do that about as well as any. Any organization out there reach out to their former players, especially the Hall of Famers during this Hall of Fame weekend. They've got the big gala, gala, gala coming up on Sunday. The inductions on Saturday. A good weekend to come on out to the ballpark. Really will. Yeah. You've got the uh, the Griffies, father and son play for the Reds. The Perez's father and son played for the Reds. The Roses, father and son, played for the Reds. The Larkin brothers played for the Reds. Hamilton been on three times with a couple of hits. In the top of the eighth, Reds up seven to one. Trying to get out of Miami above 500. Trying to win their first series since the All Star break. A dismal road trip to New York and Milwaukee that started things. The homestand where they won one game in each series. They can get this one today. They will have won three of four down here. Hard to third. Nice back at it pick by McGee. And he makes the play. Two up, two down in the eighth for Jay Bruce. In the game, two hits, two for four. Mentioned John Lackey making his first Cardinal start today at home against Milwaukee. The Brewers get on the board early. That game now in the fifth. Milwaukee two, St. Louis nothing. Pirates and the Diamondbacks play beginning in about 25 minutes out in Arizona. 
Foul tipped by Bruce into the glove of Mathis and a 1 2 3 8 for the lefty Dan Jennings. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, and every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1. Tune into America's pregame weeknights at 6 Eastern time only on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Go. Bottom half of the eighth inning, J.J. Hoover, a 1 2 3 7. Back to the mound here in the eighth. He gets Jordani Valdez being first, then Giancarlo Stanton, then Casey McGee. Mike Leak, six innings, one run, three hits. Hoover, a 1 2 3 7. Chris mentioned it earlier. It's very impressive. Each of the four starters in this series for the Reds gives up one run. Guido went seven. Latos went seven. Bailey went seven. Leak today goes six. It ended a streak of the stat that I love to throw out there. The ultra quality start. The Reds have had six straight ultra quality starts. And to find that again for those that may not know. But well, the quality start is six innings, three runs or less. The ultra quality start, seven innings, two runs or less. Hamilton runs that ball down. Used to be I just getting ready for a game. Look at the pitcher starts and his quality starts. Now I also look at his ultra quality. You can, you can find that somewhere or do you get to count them down? Just count them down, yeah. It's that I really got from you, who you got from something Billy Ball. that you read, right? Bill Chuck writes a great little column uh, at Billyball.com. Jay Hoover is face four, retired four. Difference in ERA when people who don't like the term quality start say the ERA on a quality start is 450. 
Well, the ERA in an ultra quality start, 2.57. Mm -hmm. Stanton for the fourth time today strikes out. The golden sombrero for Stanton he is amongst the league leaders in strikeouts. The Reds have been able to get him with that breaking ball down and away today. And it's been the same pitch to that every time. I mean, he's still up there looking for something that's going to hang for him. And as long as you keep on top of that breaking ball and drive it away from him, he just swings right over the top of it. Four strikeouts in a game. Ties a career high for Giancarlo Stanton. He had homered in three straight going into last night's game. And darn near make it four in a row on that ball off the wall in right field in the first inning. But today, four times up, four strikeouts. McGee bats with two out. This is a very good outing here for J.J. Hoover, if for nothing else, to start rebuilding the confidence of this young man. Well, you know it's in there just based on what J.J. Hoover has done the last couple of years for the Reds in high pressure situations. He just kind of got off to a bad start and just snowballed from there. And I think part of it came from the fact that he was beginning to mix in that slider more and more. And his curveball lost the effectiveness that it had in years past. Sometimes for a pitcher, especially a relief pitcher that doesn't get a chance to space batters more than one time through the order, you know, you start combining too many pitches in there, especially breaking balls. A slider, of course, is a harder breaking ball than a slower curveball. But sometimes those two pitches blend together and they give you kind of something in between, which neither of is effective as either one individually. Garrett Jones 0 for 3 in the game with a runner aboard, two out. Five walks given up by Reds pitching today, but leading 7 to 1. by Jones out to right field is out of here line drive two run homer by Garrett Jones makes it seven to three in favor of the Reds that gives Jones a dozen home runs on the year that's his 12th career home run against the Reds Equaling the most he's hit against any other club. He's also hit 12 against the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, Jones is one of those guys, a big, strong, strapping left-hander that defines the left-handed wheelhouse. And that baby was down and a little bit on the inner third, just enough to get that bad head out. He only has three hits in the entire four-game series, so he really has not done any damage at all to speak of to the Reds in this four-game set before that home run. It looked like J.J. Hoover may get through this thing unscathed through two. He got within one out of doing just that. Jonathan Broxton starting to stretch out out in the red bullpen. They are now talking about the Marlins, as Dusty liked to say, within slam reach at seven to three. Santiago handles this ground ball by Ozuna, and that's the final out in the bottom of the eighth. We go to the ninth, seven three Reds.
been brought to you by Chevy. Visit your tri-state Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, who ranks third in the country on U.S. News and World Report's 2014 Best Children's Hospitals. But our Nissan drive of the game, the Reds have powered up. Seven runs, 13 hits in this game. Bruce has come up with two hits and a run batted in. Hamilton, three runs scored, two hits and an RBI. Mazzarocco, a two-run single back in the sixth. Ludwig, another RBI and a double. The only extra base hit the Reds have had in this game. And there's the highs in terms of runs and hits. And this is going to be another hit for the Reds. A single by Frazier. Going to give Todd a four-hit afternoon. Number 14 on the day for the Reds. Four hits in a game by Frazier today is a season high for him. In fact, it ties a career high for him. He did it last year against the Washington Nationals in April. He gets a four-hit game here today. Mazzarocco toward the alley, and that'll get down. Short hop by Ozuna out in center field. So a three-hit game for Devin Mazzarocco. We had Frazier coming in since the break at 190. Mazzarocco at 214. Bruce at 100. All have multi-hit games today. Yeah, well, it's good to see him begin to drop in. You want to save a few, of course. If you're tomorrow's starting pitcher, that's what you're thinking. But in the meantime, if you're Devin Mazzarocco picking up three knocks and Frazier picking up four, that is seven of the 15 between those number three and four hitters in the lineup. Still a few hits away from equaling a season high. They had 19 hits at Milwaukee on the 15th of June. They have 15 here today. Here's Ludwig who's had a very good series. Three hits and 12 at bats, but with five runs batted in. Bullpen busy with a couple of right handers. Jonathan Broxton and Carlos Contreras. Under the watchful eye of bullpen coach Mac Jenkins. You and Mac go back quite a while a ways, don't you? Yeah, he was the uh, 
Mm -hmm. Longtime pitching coach in the Reds minor league system. He was a pitching coach in Louisville back in the early 2000s and then was the pitching coordinator just prior to uh, Mark Riggins taking over that job. Been up here now. Last year's the assistant pitching coach. This year is the bullpen coach. Does a great job as far as scouting the opposite, the opposing hitters, mm -hmm. and supplementing what you get from the advanced scouts and all the, of course, the the stuff on computers that guys get to, like Rob Coughlin, assemble. But he breaks it down, and you know Brian Price was a, was very instrumental in getting him, you know, moved up to be from the assistant pitching coach to that bullpen job. Yeah, there can be much more to that job than just answering the phone and pointing to a pitcher and say you're up and throwing and that's what Mac has brought to that thing. Really it should be and is here now an extension. Of the manager and the pitching coach out in the bullpen. Razor out at second. Nobody out here in the night. Jacob Turner the starter for the Marlins on the hook for the loss in this game he allowed five runs nine hits in four innings. Sam Dyson two unearned runs in relief in three. Now Jennings in his second inning. Double play ball McGee. Valdez Bean, Jones. Around the horn it goes five four three. First double play in this series turned by the Marlins. Frazier ends up at third. And the batter will be Skip Schumacher with two out. Mike Leak, six innings of one run, three hit baseball. Only blemish on his line in this game were the four walks. Although three of them came relatively early. A.J. Hoover two innings two runs on the home run ball by Garrett Jones. And the Reds will have. I would guess Contreras. To start the bottom of the ninth with a four run lead. And if they need help. Broxton would be ready. Meanwhile Heisey is on deck that's the pitcher spot. He would bat. If he gets up there for Hoover. Looking ahead of the Marlins bottom of the ninth. Oh the bottom part of the order shortstop Echevarria the catcher Mathis and then the pitcher spot. Schumacher strikes out the inning comes to an end. Seven strikeouts in the game for Marlins pitching. Bottom of the ninth for Miami upcoming.
Game time is at 7.05. That means Reds Live gets things going beginning at 6.30. It's presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing right here on your exclusive home of the Reds. Fox Sports Ohio. Reds will be trying to snap, as I mentioned earlier, a nine-game losing streak in Cleveland at Progressive Field. They've been swept there each of the last three years. Two teams from the Buckeye State will play the next four days. Two in Cleveland, two in Cincinnati, and here's the pitching matchups for the upcoming series. Simon and the very successful Corey Kluber tomorrow night. Cueto and Tomlin wrap up the series in Cleveland Tuesday night, Wednesday night in Cincinnati. Salazar against Latos, and then T.J. House, the left-hander, against Homer Bailey on Thursday. Four-game series against the in-state rival, the Cleveland Indians. Night games all, 7.05 and 7.05 in Cleveland, 7.10 Wednesday and Thursday at Great American Ballpark. And Severia leads it off against not Carlos Contreras, but Jonathan Broxton here in the bottom of the ninth. To the alley. That's going to get down and go to the wall for Echeverria. He has himself at least double, and now he'll go for three. And with a slide, he's in there with a the leadoff triple. Echeverria has had himself a nice series, not really from the bat. He has not done much offensively. In fact, he only had two hits in the series prior to this ball game, but he's had a couple of extra base hits, a double down the left field line, came around to score, and then this triple right here. But he, what he has done is play defensive miracles out there. Brent Butler, the one of the better base runners in his era, is their third base coach. So that run really doesn't mean much to the Reds. They're looking for outs right here. Have the infield back. 42 games now for Broxton. Math is up now. Reed Johnson. The preeminent pinch hitters in the big leagues this year. Waits on deck. Non-save situation for Broxton. And of course he cannot create his own save situation. With that triple Chapman gets up throwing in the bullpen. Two hits in the game from Mathis. There's Chapman. Reds up seven to three bottom of the ninth trying to win their first series since the All Star break trying to take three out of four down here. Try to go into Cleveland above 500. Indians, in fact, entered today a 500 team as well at 55 and 55. So the exact identical record of the Reds. They are in extra innings at Progressive Field, tied 3-3 with Texas. They scored two in the bottom of the ninth to tie that game. Brewers still leading at St. Louis, two nothing. That game now into the seventh inning. Broxton looking to get the first out here in the bottom of the ninth. And he does with a strikeout of the catcher, Jeff Mathis. Well, you know, he gave up that triple to Echeverria on a first pitch breaking ball. I think from then on, it just kind of angered him and said, you know what, I'm just sticking with the heat right here. And he throws three of them right by Mathis. So now it's Reed Johnson. Hitting 242 on the year with a couple of homers, 20 batted in. He's 13 for 45 as a pinch hitter this year. Number 13 leads the major leagues. 
terms of his pinch hits. Very late there on a 94 mile an hour fastball. He's down two strikes. Christian Yelich, who was the final batter of the game last night when he singled in the left to uh, right center, waits on deck. Reds would like to see him be the last batter of this afternoon's game, but certainly in a different circumstance. Swing and a miss, and the bat goes flying as well out of the hands of Reed Johnson. So after giving up the triple back-to-back -back strikeouts for Broxton, you know you're looking at this inning if you're Jonathan Broxton completely differently than if you're looking at it from Brian Price's standpoint or somebody standing in the dugout because he doesn't want that run to score. So you bear down just like it's a one run ball game because that run means something to your earned run average and everything else when it's all tallied up. So he comes back and really gets strong with fastballs that are just running right up on the hitters today. And his ERA had been under one until he gave up that run on the home run ball to Giancarlo Stanton in the eighth inning on Friday. He starts today at 1.15. Looking for the final out of this game and this series right here with Christian Yelich at the plate. He walked twice early. Oh, for two since then. There's that to Maria at third base with two out. Got it. Reds win. They take three out of four down here in Miami and go back above the 500 mark by a game at 56 and 55. Their first series win since the All Star break. And maybe this is the impetus they need to get rolling again. Well, it could be. I mean, you come down here and you win three out of four. I'm sure that Brian Price is thinking, man, we were very close to sweeping this four game set. They've always done well against the Marlins, especially recently. And they continue that. Right down here in Miami, they roll on into Cleveland where it hasn't been quite as friendly, but this team's built a little momentum and it'll be.